Nancy, this is one of those moments that we've just replayed and replayed this morning. You can't look away. I can imagine what you were thinking. There was like dead silence there when you told the dad, your son has been found. You know, I, I felt the same uh, the same way. Thank you for having me, Robin. I, I, I don't know what to make of it this morning. Uh, this is how the whole thing happened. I happened to read a report of this father who was running from door to door, banging on doors, trying to get people to help him find his missing boy, uh, 12-year-old Charles Bothell oh. V. And it broke my heart. He said no one would help him find his child. Well, when I found that out, we put it on the show that night to try to help find him. Um, the story didn't fit together for me. Then we had him on, but I still wanted to help find the boy regardless of what had happened. Mm -hmm. So we put him back on the show, the father back on the show. Just before we go to him, my producer says, uh, I think I better tell you something. I said, what, 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 what? And he tells me they think the boy's been found alive in the father's basement, which, of course, doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, since that time, this is what I've learned. There is a series of interconnecting halls, hallways between the townhouses, and they think the boy may have used those. This is what else we've learned. The police in Detroit tell us that there was a barricade built using a very heavy drums and boxes they don't think a child could have built. The boy was very hungry. He had not been fed. Mm. Um, he was held overnight for medical evaluation. What does that mean? Were there obvious injuries or no? We know he has not been reunited with the father yet. I know the father had an inconclusive poly, and the stepmother refused a poly. Now, does that necessarily mean they're implicated? No, because they say they felt that they were suspects at the beginning. Um, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. all his story has is riddled with inconsistencies. But when I saw him last night after our show. He was crying and hugging reporters, saying he wants to see his son. He wants to see his son. That does not look like a guilty man to me. Hmm. And, you know, the word that keeps coming to my mind every time I see this story is just strange. I, I can't put my finger on how many different things seem strange about the story. I mean, do they say, the police, how or who may have helped them then survive for 11 days? Um, obviously, he was, he was hungry, but could you survive 11 days without food if you're that young? Well, they, they saw some evidence of food in the basement. He, he had apparently gotten something to eat. He had been kept alive. I can say that much. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when things don't fit together, when two and two equals five, when it doesn't make sense, typically that's because it's not true. It's not rational. It doesn't make sense. And what that means to me is we're missing a piece of the story that only that boy can provide. Now, will he tell the truth? I don't know, because very often crime victim children, are uh, they're so afraid mm. of what's going to happen later, they won't tell the truth. But when I saw the father smiling, crying, and hugging reporters, that made me believe the father was telling the truth. Now, when I, I had him on the air last night, last night and um, I, I don't know if you noticed this, but I asked him, have you called home? And he said, no, my cell phone's dead. It's charging in the car. That didn't make sense to me because you have to leave your car on to charge your cell phone. And if mm. my children were missing, I can tell you my cell phone would be working. But that in itself, I mean, you can't judge a case on something like that. So I've got to wait and hear all the evidence. I find it concerning that the stepmother could not be found. Where was she? I don't like that because she should have been at home trying to wait and hear word about the boy. And the stepmom lives in the home with the boy, with the father. Correct. And, and that, that's what I'm trying to get all the facts this morning because, Robin, you're very astute. When things don't fit together, there's a reason. Now, does this mean the father's involved? Not necessarily. Uh -huh. Not necessarily. But, I mean, with a kid in his basement and he didn't know and the child is hungry behind a barricade, police say, tell us, an adult built, 
Uh, it's not fitting together for me either, Robin. Plus, um, th didn't the police have cadaver dogs and searchers down there in the basement <laughs> prior to this? Yes, they had cadaver do dogs down there, which of course would not have hit because the boy's not dead. But uh, if scent dogs, bloodhounds had hit, that wouldn't mean anything because the boy would naturally have been in the basement. So if they got a hit that the boy, uh, the boy sent in the basement, it wouldn't mean anything because he would have been there naturally. So they wouldn't have been able to tell anything from that. Okay, but, so are you going to try to have the dad on again to get even more answers or, or what? You know it. <laughs> She's like, silly question, of course I am. Because it'll be interesting now after these developments and you've seen this other tape. But Nancy, we can't stop watching the tape of, of you telling the dad that his son had been found. Thank goodness, no matter what happened, thank goodness that the little boy is found and we hope safe now as they you are You know what, I was just him. saying that. I was just saying that. Somebody said, well, what's the headline? I said, headline is praise the Lord because this child is alive. That is the headline. Now we'll worry about the rest later. Nancy Grace, thank you so much. Appreciate it. So you can watch Nancy Grace to see if she's successfully able to get that father to talk again. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on HLN. Amazing.